You are finally awake. You were trying to cross the border, right? You walked right into that Imperial ambush. Same as us. And that thief over there. Stupid Don Howard virus! I don't need another copy of Skyrim! <sighs> Stupid bugs. All right. Let's try this again. Okay. Here we go. Hey, Jumbas. It's time to wake up. We got some gaming to do. So, I think it's pretty safe to say that there's a lot of us out there pretty excited for Cyberpunk 2077, but I also think it's true that uh, there's a lot of us out there who are a little bummed that it got pushed back to September, but that doesn't have to be such a bad thing. We're going to be getting a great game, but I know that's probably left a void for a lot of you until then, you know? So, I know of a lot of good cyberpunk-themed games. I know a lot of you are craving to get a little taste of the dark future, so why don't I show you some? Okay. Let's see here. There we go. So, I imagine not that many of you are actually familiar with this game. It came out in 2012, and you know what? I don't remember any advertising for this game whatsoever at all it was honestly a few years before I even found this game and the only reason I really found it was just because it was really cheap at GameStop it was basically a bargain bin title at that point and what caught my eye about it was the cover and aesthetic I thought it sounded cool. I'm like, huh? Game by EA? And I haven't even heard about it? What is this? And you wanna know what? I didn't realize just how much of a hidden gem I stumbled upon. And one of the best parts is this might be the closest thing to 2077 that you can get your hands on right now. Let's pop this sucker in. Alright. Now, when it comes to this game, you've got a couple ways to play. It's on PS3, PC, Xbox 360, and it's also backwards compatible on the Xbox One. Today, I'm going to give it a try on the Xbox One, see how the backwards compatibility looks, if it's got any visual enhancements or performance enhancements. So, without further ado...
So, just as you'd expect from some cyberpunk, in the world of Syndicate, the mega corporations rule the world. Or, as they're referred to in here as Syndicates. They introduce you to some brief history of this universe, explaining their rise to power and the technology that took the world by storm. The Dart Chip. Yeah, 2077 won't be the only game we're chipping in, so to speak. <laughs> but, whereas in Cyberpunk 2077's universe and other games of the genre, we often see wild augments and cyberware and body modifications. That's a big part of the genre. A lot of style over substance, over to speak. In Syndicate, though, it was this chip. This little neural implant that changed everything and everyone who is somebody has one of these chips and those who don't are nothing which in this universe is over half the world's population it was through these chips that the syndicates rose to power overtaking the government and being ones in total control by the year 2069 and in all that power we see corporate warfare and espionage blaze a trail of destruction and blood, leading to the creation of agents to get the edge on this fight. That's where we come in. This is where we find ourselves in the shoes of the Eurocorp agent, Miles Kilo. Kilo is an agent of Eurocorp, one of the most powerful and prominent of these syndicates in the whole world. As a new agent, he is also gifted with the latest chip prototype called the Dart 6. With it, he's the most cutting-edge agent with abilities that will grant us a powerful advantage and some unique features to our combat in-game that we're going to need in order to see just how deep the rabbit hole goes in this story set in a future where business is war. The gameplay itself in Syndicate is pretty fascinating. It even has some of the things that we'll actually be seeing in Cyberpunk 2077. Just from what I've seen among the community who has commented on this game, the combat is summarized as a cyberpunk take on the fear games, just without the horror element. I say that though because thanks to the dart chip that plays a huge part in the combat, it's going to grant you the ability to see your foes through walls and go into slow motion combat. It's almost like bullet time in a way. The chip doesn't stop just there though. No, this thing can turn you into a killing machine, a borderline monster, and the intense violence will definitely show. You're going to embrace three different powers that will grant you the edge you need in your firefights. Through your chip, you're going to have the power to hack into your foe's chips and drive them to either commit suicide by, say, pulling out a frag grenade and detonating it on themselves, and taking out those all around them. Next comes a more basic power to overload your foes and knock them off of their feet, making them extremely vulnerable and weak. And lastly, your final power to be able to quote unquote persuade your enemies to convert them to fight for you until they've basically killed off all of the enemy forces in the area or if everyone's already wiped out, in which case, they'll just finish themselves off with a bullet to the head. So as you play, you're going to be given a pretty decent range of weaponry to work with, with some really sick special weapons. Some rifles, DMRs, pistols, a sniper, and then bigger guns like swarming missiles, laser cannons, flamethrowers, and even a smart rifle. You remember the 40 minute uh, gameplay video for Cyberpunk where we saw the submachine gun that auto locked and mowed down targets around cover and all that? Or even the smart pistol from Titanfall. It's pretty much the same thing and it's pretty entertaining. Then you can get your hands on a minigun and just watch it completely shred your enemies. We're talking blasted them, limb from limb, down to a torso or even ripping them in half. Oh yeah, this game did not hold back on the blood and gore. 
it becomes an absolute symphony of violence at times in the heat of battle. So much so, we got some heat for it, even. And that's not to mention, almost all of the guns in this game actually come with alternate fire modes. So, for example, feel free to turn that shotgun into, say, uh, a long-range frag round shooting rifle. Or make that assault rifle into a DMR that can shoot targets through walls. Or maybe make that laser gun into a freaking laser cannon. With this arsenal you pick up, you'll be taking on a decent variety of targets. Your typical goons and grunts with the various guns and rolls to fit, shield wielders, specialists with jammers to block your hacking, drones that you'll have to hack as you fight your way to break their shielding, and enemies with invisibility cloaks, and so on. But it does pick up into mini bosses that have shields that you'll have to break and hack into them in the midst of combat as they take you on typically heavily armed. And in some missions, you'll have to take on enemy agents from other syndicates, having some interesting and very fierce boss battles as you take them on and their unique powers and skills. In doing so, though, you'll get the chance to be rewarded with their chip and make some upgrades to yourself. Most of the upgrades are mostly health focused and resistance focused. Some may tweak your guns or your dart to last longer or recover more adrenaline to keep the rampage going on. It's also worth noting that there's occasional puzzle sections in this game that may feel a little awkward, having to hack your way through various objects at just the touch of a button. Thankfully, there aren't too many of these. They shouldn't even really interrupt the flow of the game too much, or cause you trouble. And I should note that if the hacking sounds intimidating in the midst of combat, it really isn't difficult. It's just at the touch of a button, really. Typically, just holding it down for a brief moment is all you need to do. It's pretty straightforward and nothing too intrusive. At worst, you might let go a little too fast, or the prompt might not even get clicked. Now, I also really have to take a moment to praise the aesthetics and style of the world. The visuals of the architecture and its staggering scale makes it look so awe-inspiring to the eye. It really looks like a world that'd be so gorgeous and jaw-droppingly cool to be placed in. You'll see buildings that reach into the vast beyond, stretching far beyond the clouds, ships and flying cars moving about, all sorts of holograms and cool advertisements, slick and clean styles, and so much more. The devs clearly put a lot of time and designs into this, and they're absolutely worth stopping to admire. And oh my god, we can't forget about the sound design and music in this game either. It does feature its own original soundtrack for the most part, with lots of techno and electronic music fitting of the future, and the locations that you'll be taken to around the world. Though it should also be noted that the game's theme song is actually by Skrillex, and it's actually a really catchy tune that you'll hear a couple times. Probably the most memorable one from the game, in fact. The rest of the soundtrack does a nice job of fitting the mood, though nothing is particularly too memorable for me off the top of my head. A lot of it is just really atmospheric and pleasing to the ear for the most part. And the sounds you hear in the world do a generally nice job of fitting this future tech, for fitting the hacking and the AIs as well. The guns, though, will sound like they are dripping with raw power and absolutely roar each time you fire them, each one properly showing off their incredible lethality. And looking at the voices for the characters, the main characters were done decently enough. At least for the main characters, anyways. The voice of your partner named Merit and your boss, the head of Eurocorp named Jack, both seem to be performances that really stood out well to me, personally. You just keep surprising us. Volunteering to sign up for the prototype despite the risk of brain cancer. A real prodigy, alright. Or was it the thought of getting your head examined by the very lovely Dr. Droll? Alright. 
Now, that does cover the main game, but there is a little something else that I should mention, at least. This game does actually have a big co-op mode, and it's one that I remember being exceptionally well, in fact. I poured so many hours into it and savored every single moment from it. The devs really poured their heart and soul into it, and they were quite proud of it, honestly. And I remember it very vividly showing all that effort. You played as uh, four mercenaries for another syndicate, essentially, and took on jobs from stealing data and intel to eliminating targets of interest from other syndicates. It had some nice variety um, with varying objectives that really required you and your team to work closely together. There were about nine missions, I think, and every single one of them was pretty entertaining, taking you to new locations you don't even see in the main campaign. If I remember correctly, you can also upgrade your characters, give them loadouts and roles, customize the weaponry atop of the fact that I think the few guns that don't even appear in the main campaign were in co-op. Now, unfortunately, since this game never gained much traction and sales and it's been so long, I'm guessing it's pretty safe to assume that you won't even really find anyone on co-op at this point. But... If you can gather up at least, you know, two or three other buddies and give it a try, then I very highly suggest doing so. And I got a pretty good feeling that even now you can get so much enjoyment out of this, given how strongly it stood. So, with that, that more or less wraps up Syndicate. This was such a fun game playing. And at the time when I first got it, it really blew me away. Going through it again, still holds up great to me. Um, through the single player alone, I'd say you'll get about a eight, nine hours out of it. More if you get co-op. Uh, try and get some buddies together for this. I'd say it's well worth it. Co-op had so much love and uh, hard work poured into it. It is a shame that we didn't see more from this. Uh, they crafted this so lovingly, so well. It was clear that there was a lot of lore in it, environmental storytelling, and uh, a bit of a cliffhanger ending, unfortunately. But it's well worth it. And I'm sure it's so cheap by now to get this well worth it. Now then. Given that this is one of the closest things to Cyberpunk 2077 you can get, I still got more planned. I know of uh, at least a handful of uh, more titles to do from here. And you know what? Why don't you stay tuned? Let me share with you more cyberpunk goodness in these upcoming months as we celebrate a countdown to Cyberpunk 2077. With that, stay tuned guys. We got lots more ahead of us.